This is the third episode in our series of fitting a VW van to be powered remotely. In this episode we're connecting all the main cables to distribution bars, wiring in the MultiPlus inverter and the isolation transformer. The MultiPlus Compact 12 2080 was one of the first items to be installed into the van due to its size. The MultiPlus has a simple bracket that once fitted you hang the MultiPlus on. This MultiPlus has a maximum inverter wattage of 1600 watts for onboard appliances. However if an item needs a burst of peak power the inverter can produce up to 4000 watts as well as inverting it can charge house batteries with up to 80 amps and a starter battery with up to 4 amps. As this is a test vehicle the engineers are also installing an isolation transformer. You wouldn't normally add one of these to a van but the engineers are simply using it to provide an alternative mains voltage. I'll go into that in more detail later. The next job was to install a stainless steel shore power inlet for the mains connection. A suitable location towards the rear of the van was found where the depth of the inlet wouldn't cause an obstruction. A pilot hole was drilled through the side of the van and the inlet's diameter was marked. The hole was cut out using a jigsaw and then the four smaller holes for the inlet screws were then drilled. The distance of a 3 core 2.5 mm mains cable was measured between the inlet and an RCD consume unit. The cable ends were crimped with ferrules and connected into the rear of the inlet. The inlet was then mounted in the side of the van. At the other end of the mains cable the three cores were routed through a consume unit and a single 16 amp RCD. After the RCD the positive, negative and earth were routed through a plastic grommet in the steel mounting panel up to the MultiPlus. The engineers once again used ferrules on the cable's ends and wired them into the MultiPlus input terminals. In reverse the three core cable was wired from the MultiPlus's output back into the consume unit and through a second 16 amp RCD before being wired to both a four way socket supplying 230 volts as well as the input of the isolation transformer. This transformer is purely in this system as an example of how to supply 115 volts to a secondary socket. It is not used to prevent electrolytic corrosion as this is a VW van and not a boat. In this area, uh, in this part of Europe, all the consumers are uh, connected to the grid using 230 volts and 50 hertz. But we have uh, customers, for example, we have boat builders uh, and they are producing boats for uh, different markets. For example, they are producing boats for uh, United States. And of course, in there, the frequency and the voltage is different. We have on the back uh, a, a transformer, auto transformer, that will convert from 230 volts AC to 115 volts uh, AC, of course. And uh, then they can check uh, with consumers that are made for that area, they can check if our system is working or, or not. And of course, it's, it's working. All the sources from the solar panels, the alternator, the lithium battery all need to be connected together. For this we are using a Victron Lynx distributor. It is basically two heavy duty bus bars with an outer casing. The distributor however has the addition of four mega fuses built in. Although this distributor is showing some red LEDs this is not as standard and they will not illuminate when the distributor is the only Lynx item in the system. On the side of the distributor there are two connections from the lithium battery. Positive at the top and negative at the bottom. As the positive connection is exposed a cover was made using a 3D printer. Three of the positive ports are being used in this installation. 
The positive from the charge battery protect, which brings in power from the alternator and solar. This is connected via a 150 amp mega fuse. The positive to the 12 volt supply within the main frame of the display. This is also connected via a 150 amp mega fuse. Finally, a heavy duty positive to the MultiPlus. This is connected via a 300 amp fuse and to the positive terminal within the MultiPlus. The negative bus bar, which is below the positive and is set back slightly, has a number of connections to it. A negative which is connected to the middle port of the buck boost. This is for the alternator. A negative to each of the MPPT solar charge controllers. A negative to the MultiPlus's negative battery terminal. A negative to the 12 volt supply. And finally a negative to the load battery protect. As previously described, there is a 12 volt supply within the installation. Instead of simply connecting the supply to the bus bars, the load needs to be cut should there be a low voltage alert within the lithium battery. The second battery protect is set in lithium relay mode and the remote positive is connected to the battery management system load port. If the BMS senses the battery is too low, it will disconnect the relay, stopping any further loads. Included in the BMS kit is a mains detector. A network cable is plugged into the VE bus BMS MultiPlus port and into the mains detector. A shorter network cable that is supplied with the BMS is connected from the mains detector to one of the network ports within the MultiPlus. There are two two-core cables connected to the mains detector. We only need one in this install, so wire the positive and negative in parallel in with the AC in cables from the RCD. If there was a low voltage event within the lithium battery, all loads are disabled, and this includes the MultiPlus. However, if an AC power source is plugged in, the mains detector realises this and changes the MultiPlus into a charger only, bringing the lithium out of low voltage. Now we can switch the MultiPlus on and using an MK3 dongle, we connect the USB to a laptop and the network cable to the MultiPlus's VE bus network port. It's now time to program the MultiPlus. The VE Configure is a free Windows software download and is available on the Victron downloads page. Once installed, the engineers connect the MK3. They select port selection and COM port. This displays the list of ports available. Most of the time you can just select auto detect. The software will communicate with the MK dongle, which in turn communicates with the MultiPlus and retrieves all the available settings. Along the top of the screen are six tabs. In the General tab, we leave the system frequency to 50 Hz. As we have the Victron Color Control also connected, we leave the AC input current limit at 16 amps and tick the Override by Remote option. Without this option, input current from the grid can't be modified on the Color Control GX display. The Dynamic Current Limiter is a useful feature if you have a generator. The MultiPlus will follow the usage and reduce the input current automatically. This helps to stop the extra stress on a smaller generator. We leave Enable Battery Monitor unticked as we have a BMV712 installed in the system. We now select the Grid tab. As this is a van and they are not feeding power back to the grid, the country code is left as none. They leave the transfer switch as default ranges. They also disable the UPS function. This would also be the case if there was a generator connected. We now select the Inverter tab. All of the top settings in the Inverter page are left as default for this install. At the bottom section you can enable AES. AES stands for Automatic Economic Switch 
and is a way of reducing the Multiplus's power consumption at low loads. In this instance, the AES is set to engage when the Multiplus has a load lower than 58 watts and disengages when the load is higher than 72 watts. There are two options. A modified sine wave changes the sine wave output by modifying the sine wave shape. The engineers connected an oscilloscope to the Multiplus to produce this example. This option decreases the Multiplus's power consumption when in no load by around 20%. The second mode is the search mode. The Multiplus will effectively turn off automatically when there is a load lower than 58 watts. Every two seconds the output is switched on. Check if there is a higher load and if there is it will remain on. If there isn't it will turn back off. The search mode can decrease the Multiplus's power consumption if there is a no load by up to 70% and is what the engineers are enabling on this van install. We now select the charger tab. They leave the enable charger ticked and select battery type. From the drop down list they ensure lithium iron phosphate is selected and then click OK. The settings will change to the lithium parameters used by Victron. If you have a very bad grid connection or generator you can enable weak AC input and it will use the best parts of the input sine wave and use approximately 66% of the power available. The engineers untick stop after excessive bulk as there is always a load on the batteries and if this was enabled the battery would never be fully charged. As this is a lithium battery the use equalization remains unticked and the remaining six boxes have been set by the battery type parameters selected earlier. We now select the virtual switch tab and ensure do not use VS is selected. Finally the assistance tab is selected. We need to add an assistant to the setup. This is like an app for the Multiplus and in this instance as we have a lithium battery we select add assistant and select VE bus BMS. Once it's loaded into the assistant setup screen we select it and click the start assistant button. We then click next. Within the Multiplus compact there are some dip switches we ensure the dip switch 1 is on and the dip switch 2 is set to off. Then click the OK button. The assistant screen confirms that nothing else is required and the engineer clicked OK. Now that all the settings have been configured the engineer selects the send settings button in the left hand panel and ensures modified settings is highlighted. Then clicks OK. The modified settings will be sent to the Multiplus. As we also added a new assistant, we say yes for the assistant to be sent as well. When using the VE config software, if you need help with anything, you can click the help link and then select an item for more details. Once the settings have been sent, you should receive an information screen. Click OK and the Multiplus will restart and be ready to invert the 12 volts to 230 volts and charge the lithium battery using the power via the shoreline connector. In the next and final episode we will be going through the Colour GX install and set it up to communicate to the front of the van as well as back to the VRM portal on Victron's website. We will also be detailing all the parts used in this VW van install and include a full schematics drawing.